I'm Arnaud Jeunet, I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Jean-Luc Buffier and David Luna. And today I will talk about the publication of Type 6 for static samples with control intended defects. So I will present the project background and uh, after that, how do we manufacture uh, fatigue specimens with control internal defect and in situ uh, uh, synchrotron fatigue testes um, for these carrying specimens. Uh, and uh, I have to say that all the um, results that we show here uh, are published uh, in scripta material that is in press now. Okay, so as you may know, casting parts contains microstructural defects, uh, which are possible sites for fatigue crack initiation. And in the industry, three rejection criteria are based, are used and based on the shape, the nature and the size of these defects. Um, okay. And what question would be, what is the influence of the location of this defect? That is to say, if there are <coughs> a new surface inside the bulge. And this is what Itziar Serrano Minos, during her PhD, tried to answer. She used to cast a log and she put inside fatigue specimens uh, internal artificial defects shown in magenta uh, and we can see that uh, there are a lot of natural casting defects shown in blue. After fatigue testing in situ, uh, what happened? Always a surface crack initiated from a natural casting defect and no internal crack uh, initiated from uh, the uh, big uh, internal artificial defect. So the question was how to initiate and propagate an internal crack uh, in a reproducible manner which allows us uh, to um, uh, perform in situ fatigue test. Okay. Sorry. Uh, the, first, uh, the first idea was to diminish the applied stress and to perform in situ gigacycle fatigue test uh, and this is the PhD of Alexandre Messager and the second idea was to uh, produce uh, new specimens with another method and this is uh, what I will uh, talk about today so how do we produce this kind of specimens? Uh, we take a first sheet of material a uh, titanium alloy uh, and we drill a uh, notch uh, by Feldosman laser. This is done by Arnold Beck from the University of Ottawa. And here is a typical uh, notch that we obtained. After that, we took another sheet of this material and we diffusion bond them by spark plus mass sintering under a primary vacuum and at a low temperature. After that, we um, cut um, fatigue samples and we ensure uh, the sampling of the notch by X-ray radiography and finally we polish the samples until the diameter of 1.2 mm in order to avoid surface crack initiation. Uh, so now we are able to produce uh, this kind of samples. Let's characterize uh, the microstructure uh, at the diffusion bonding interface. Uh, I think, I bet that in the audience no one can see the uh, internal, uh, the uh, diffusion bonding interface between the two sheets uh, for this EBSD map. In fact, it is here presented by the dotted line, uh, and this indicates that there is a good joining of the two sheets, uh, and our material has uh, uh, is a, a, a titanium load composed of. Uh, the alpha phase and uh, this phase uh, has a 4 different diameters of the grade. 
So now I will present the uh, in-situ fatigue test. Um, first, the experimental condition. Uh, we perform in-situ tomography fatigue test, so we were able to have uh, 3D images of our samples uh, near that notch. Uh, with this uh, fatigue device, uh, we fatigue our samples and we use a lot of beam times uh, and the box size for well about uh, one micrometer. So now I will present the results on the internal crack propagation. Uh, first, the shape of the cracks. Uh, if we look at the section view of the notch before testing it, we can see that there is a bevel shape at the diffusion conduit interface and fingers away from this interface. Okay. And if we look at projected views along the applied stress axis, <coughs> we can see that our notch has a square shape. And now, if we fatigue the samples, we can observe that uh, at the first cycles, a crack initiates from the notch and grows globally in mode 1, and that the front is very regular and circular, uh, and that this crack causes the failure of the specimens. So <coughs> here is a typical cryptography. And now if we plot all the crack front uh, in the same plot over the number of cycles, uh, <coughs> we can see that the front are very regular and circular. And if we um, plot the crack growth rate over the number of cycles uh, for different polar angles, here, 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 <coughs> uh, we can see that there is a slight retardation effect at the interface. Right. and that at the end of the propagation the crack seems to be attracted to the uh, sample's free surface. Moreover, if we assume that uh, the projection of the crack uh, is a disk and if we take the radius of this disk uh, we can see that all the points for the crack growth rate are in the middle of the uh, point that I presented earlier. So this approximation uh, is good for estimating uh, the crack size. So uh, now we want to have some more quantitative data on internal crack propagation. So we plotted the um, crack propagation curve uh, and we wanted to uh, compare it with literature data uh, for the same material and uh, for a surface crack going in air and a surface crack going in ultralight vacuum uh, because as, as you may know uh, internal cracks uh, are assumed to grow in vacuum. So first we tested uh, a specimen with a surface notch and our data are in good agreement with the literature data. And now I will present the uh, results uh, for the uh, internal uh, crack propagation. So here is the first curve, the second curve is here, and the third curve. We can see that the crack propagation rates are lower than that surface crack, but to varying degrees. And that there might be an influence on the environment inside the notch. So, to better control the environment at the crack tip, we decided to diffusion bond the two sheets under argon environment and perform fatigue tests. So, here is the, a new specimen with this uh, type of diffusion bonding. And here another one. And we can see that the crack growth rates are lower when carbon gas is injected during diffusion bonding, but that there is still uh, an environment that affects the crack growth rate as our points do not reach the ultra high vacuum points. 
So to conclude, uh, we are able to produce static samples with controlled internal defects, which led to systematic uh, internal crack initiation, and uh, led us to follow uh, and monitor uh, uh, internal crack propagation. But uh, we have to better control uh, uh, the environment. And for future work, we can do various sizes, shapes, and location of the artificial defect, uh, perform some finite element analysis, uh, try to understand the differences between our specimens, and uh, perform some chemical analysis of uh, the environment inside the notch, and try to uh, apply this method to different materials. Thank you for your attention.